coming up on this week's news. The authors of the wiring regs intervene in the debate about live testing. An inquest is held into an engineer's electrocution while live working on a super yacht, and the trade is asked for help after a spate of solar panel fires across the UK. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van on site or down at the wholesale counter. I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. The author of the wiring regs have intervened in the long-running debate in the trade about live testing. In a special advisory published this week, the IET says that initial verification of circuits should not be a case of doing it the way it's always been done. The organisation says installers often carry out earth fault loop impedance testing for all circuits. This isn't necessary, says the IET, and it can be potentially dangerous. It says, instead, the information can often be calculated by measuring the conductor resistances in a dead circuit. The organisation cites Regulation 14 of the Electricity at Work Regulations, which states that no work should be carried out on or near live conductors unless it is unreasonable for them to be dead. It says a risk assessment should be carried out to determine what live testing is needed. Where live testing is required, suitable precautions shall be used as set out by Regulation 14. The IET says that if an accident occurs when working live, the question that would be asked in a court of law will be, was it necessary to carry out live testing? If you'd like to come and vehemently debate this issue with someone, then pop down to the installer show on the 24th of June, where Gary will be supporting the good folks at Hive on stand 5H80. He'd love to hear your views on this subject. I'll be there too, but Gary's really the expert, so give him all your difficult questions. Make sure you click the link in the show notes to register for your tickets and get a free drinky and a bacon sandwich. Now, remarkably, the IET's intervention comes as the inquest into the death of British electrical engineer Roy Tem comes to a close. Tem from Southampton died on board a £48 million super yacht in February last year. He'd gone below decks in an attempt to replace the actuator of the ventilation system damper, which had failed. He started work without isolating the electrical supply. Hampshire coroner Jason Pegg said it's possible that he was trying to save time and effort despite the risk. At some stage, the experienced engineer came into contact with live 230 volt AC conductors while working on the relevant circuit. The inquest heard that Tem was working in temperatures of 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. He was hot and sweaty, which would have aided the electrical flow through his body. He received an electric shock and suffered a massive heart attack. Despite efforts to resuscitate him, his heart could not be restarted and he was pronounced dead in hospital. Peg returned a verdict of misadventure. Meanwhile, in Spain, a two-year-old girl received a fatal electric shock while bouncing on a funfair trampoline. The toddler, who isn't being named, died after touching the metal fence surrounding the attraction. Paramedics fought desperately to resuscitate her for half an hour, but she was declared dead at the scene. Three older children, aged 8, 11 and 12, also touched the fence but were unharmed. Investigators are probing how the temporary fence became live. Residents of the town near the city of Mercia are now calling for tighter rules and more inspections around the electrical supplies at festival events. From the eFix team, we'd like to send our deepest condolences to all the families affected by these sad events. It's just heartbreaking news. In other news, the Electrical Contractors Association is asking the trade for help after a spate of solar panel fires across the country. In Dorset, a £1.5 million mansion burned down a month after the owners put photovoltaics on the roof. At its peak, 20-foot flames leapt into the sky. A spokesperson for Dorset and Wiltshire Fire Service blamed the panels for the inferno. In Bristol, a blaze which broke out on the roof of St Michael's Maternity Hospital was also blamed on the solar installation. No casualties were reported and the NHS said the hospital is open again and so services are running. In Surrey, two housing associations have announced they are disconnecting and decommissioning solar panels from a number of their properties following a second fire in two years. At its height, 12 fire engines and additional specialist vehicles were in attendance. It's understood that a number of properties have been destroyed. The Electrical Safety First charity is now asking members of the Electrical Contractors Association to help it gain insights into these and other incidents. It wants installers to take part in a survey it's conducting to gather data on fires in solar panel installations. It says that along with the significant increase in renewable energy systems, there's also been a notable rise in the number of fires. It says the input of the electrical trade is crucial to understanding these incidents. It wants you to share your experiences so that safety measures can be enhanced. I've put a link to the survey in the show notes. 
The IET has released its latest electrician's guide. This one's about domestic energy storage systems. The guide is designed as an accompaniment to BS 7671 and the IET Code of Practice for Electrical Energy Storage Systems. It provides practical on-site advice about the installation of battery packs. The publication looks at issues such as planning permission, electrical design, fire safety and data communications, control and monitoring, and information security. It costs 50 quid and can be bought from the IET's website. No doubt scriptwriter Ray curled up with his copy in between bouts of fly fishing for salmon on the Emerald Isle. Good to have you back for a full script this week, Ray. You can get your copy from the link in the show notes. Now, welcome to our Electrical News Weekly feature where we focus on a specific product area. This week, we're channeling our inner Edison with some brilliant electrical innovations. Top of our list is an RCD that can reset itself. Devices in the Gevis restart range can switch themselves back on if it's safe to do so. The restart technology has built-in diagnostics and self-testing. It continuously assesses electrical parameters and environment environmental conditions to provide automatic reset. The units, which are available as both RCD and RCBO formats, also boast automatic testing with periodic and automatic control of the residual current protection without interrupting the power supply. The company says the restart range cuts maintenance costs as a callout isn't needed to reset the device manually. There are a total of 46 variants in the range. Another bit of kit we love is this tool tray from Remy Tools. It's designed for when you're working on consumer units. The tray was developed by electrician Garrett Rooney, who became frustrated with drop tools and having to look away from his work to find the right implement. The unit has space for up to four screwdrivers and four pliers along with additional items. You mount it to the bottom of the board using the new Go clamp which gives it an ultra secure connection. The Go clamp also lets you use the tray on ladders, workbenches and cherry pickers. A new and improved version of the socket safety shield has been unveiled. The safety shield allows you to complete first and second fix at the same time. The unit sits between the back box and the accessory so that the latter stands proud of the wall. It gives lots of space for the plasterers, decorators and tilers to do their thing. At the end of the work, the safety shield is removed and the accessory is screwed directly into the back box. During its time on the wall, it's electrically safe so the power can be turned back on for the occupants. You pop a shower cap on the accessory to keep it clean. It's available in standard single and double socket sizes. The latest version of the socket safety shield now has improved ingress protection, a design which allows easier assembly and it's BS5377 certified. There's also an improved fixing for socket screws which allows safety shield to be fitted without the accessory fitted if required. Kitty Safety Europe has unveiled a fire alarm controller designed to simplify the testing and maintenance of its popular Cavius family of alarms. The CV9101 is wireless, so it eliminates the need for physical access to alarms. Homeowners can also remotely test and silence their Cavius alarms using a test or hush button. Kitty says this feature is great for elderly or disabled occupants who may struggle to access the units, as well as for properties with high ceilings. You can link up to 32 alarms in one group. We've made a couple of videos featuring the wireless controller and other Cavius products, so check those out. Dialog has launched a kit for solar installers which brings together all the gear you'll need for PV jobs. Key items of the SL350 includes a solar irradiance tool which measures irradiance up to 1400 watts per meter squared. It includes both a built-in surface temperature probe and an external probe for underside cell temperature, handy for meeting IEC 62446-1 standards. You also get an integrated compass and inclinometer so you can check the array direction and roof pitch during a site survey. Also in the kit is the DL6414 clamp meter. It measures up to a thousand amps and a thousand volts in both AC and DC. It boasts additional functions such as low impedance, inrush current measurement and a mode for variable frequency drive. It's even got a built-in torch. Joe Hammond's actually created an entire CPD training package on how to design the perfect solar installation so make sure you click the link in the show notes to check that out. That was made in association with our good friends over at Sunsync. Ratio has unveiled its latest EV charger, the IO6 Pro. The company says it's taken everything the trade loved about the original IO6 six and leveled it up. It has features such as an integrated certified MID monitor for accurate energy monitoring and billing. It also boasts single and three phase open pen protection which eliminates the need for costly earth rods. There's also click in terminals and accessible ports. By October it'll come with an automatic welcome light. You commission using the ratio app over Bluetooth. You can check it out at the installer show from the 24th to the 26th of June. That's our Electrical News Weekly roundup of products or people we think deserve some attention. Next time we're going week for wiring access.
accessories. Our Learner of the Week has been nominated by Gary Hayes and is Will Mills from Derby. Will has set his heart on becoming a fully qualified electrician. He recently achieved his level two in electrical installation and is keen to progress. The trade is partly in his blood as he has been working in the family construction business for the past few years. We're super impressed with Will's practical work and we wish him all the best with his studies. Now, Gary spends a lot of time supporting apprentices, learners and contractors in the electrical industry, so I'd like to ask if now you could support him. As many of you may know, his daughter Vienna was involved in a tragic accident some years ago and suffered a life-changing injury. But because she's an absolute boss and doesn't let anything hold her back, she's decided to run the London Marathon to support the charity Rays of Sunshine, who helped her enormously through the very difficult period following her accident. Many in the industry have already contributed to Vienna's Just Giving page, but if you haven't and you can spare a bit of cash to support a good cause that makes very ill kids' days a bit brighter, it would be very much appreciated. You'll find the link for that in the show notes. Our question of the week was based on our free training package made in association with GRP containment specialist Marshall Tuflex. We asked, what is the primary material composition of GRP? The answer was, of course, glass fibre in polyester resin. The good news is that the vast majority of you chose the correct answer. Some 82% of YouTubers opted for it, and a stonking 90% of LinkedIn has got it right as well. Another win for Team Blue. And the best overall result we've had in ages. Reward yourself by checking out that free training package that we created with Marshall Tuflex on GRP Containment. You know where you'll find the link. Finally, a reminder that there's still time to win a pair of tickets for the Oasis reunion in the Schneider Electric promo. The company is offering two premium club hospitality tickets in its What's the Story promotion. The Oasis tickets offer some of the best seats in the stadium and access to exclusive bars. You'll also get Oasis merch and a £50 Uber voucher to get you home afterwards. Runner-up prizes are pretty cool too. They include Ticketmaster and Apple Music gift cards in values from £50 to £250. To enter, spend £250 quid on Schneider products at participating wholesalers and you'll receive an entry ticket. Simply scan the QR code on your competition entry ticket to access the entry form. The competition closes at the end of June 2025. And our usual reminder that we're in the market for your stories, your projects and your recommendations as we'd like to share them with the wider eFix community. Over the next few weeks we'll be featuring wiring accessories, cable management and fire safety and security products. So send us pictures of your installs or let us know if you've come across any new kit or companies that are making your job easier or any products that you think deserve a shout out. And just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, they're the people who've created the Swiss Army knife of solar inverters along with all weather batteries, very much the boy scouts of the solar industry, it's Sunsync. Next, with deep commitments to the economy, the environment and the electrical community, they're so much more than an electrical distributor, the self-styled experts in shifting boxes, it's Nylon. Up next, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team, it's Ludum Palazzoli. In an age of energy uncertainty, if you're looking for your next EV charge point to install, then helping you charge into the future with confidence, powering the future together, it's Rolex. And now, suspend your disbelief like you suspend a cable tray. If you need to get any piece of building services equipment into the air and keep it there, then check out Zipclip with their new award-winning Lumo consumer unit and offering complete product support from their highly trained team, it's CPN QDIS. And with over 5,000 product lines from heating, lighting, ventilation to wiring accessories, if you need it, they've got it. It's electrical distributor CED Group. Don't forget to use the code EFIX30 to claim your 30% discount on top quality light fittings from Philips and Ecolink. Download the LumExpert app today and make your life easier and less expensive. It's the light of our lives, Signify. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winner of last week's challenge word competition. Last week's words were convoluted and submariner. And the winner to be plucked from our electronic hat was Marcus Naylor, which I was really chuffed about because I had the chance to meet Marcus in person at CEF Live recently. And he reminded me that he came up with Joe Hammond's winning nickname of Joe 3PO, which we all loved. So thanks for coming over to say hello, Marcus. Make sure you click the Get Involved link in the show notes to claim your prize. And if, like Marcus, you'd like to come and say hello in person, then don't forget to register for your free installer show tickets. You're nearly out of time as Gary and I will be there supporting the good folks at Hive on stand 5H80 on Tuesday the 24th of June, which is the day after this episode goes out. So click the link in the show notes to register 
and don't miss out. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.